evening. My name is Susie Jackson. Welcome to the Red Skelton Performing Arts Center and our evening of winds and percussion. We will open tonight's performance with the BU Woodwind Ensemble under the direction of H. Joyce Kimmerer. They will be performing five selections this evening, Rondo, Sonatine, and Poco d'Adagio, all by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, Duo Number no. One by Ludwig von Beethoven, and Canzone Personar Number no. Two by Giovanni Gabrielli, arranged by David Marlott. Please welcome the BU Woodwind Ensemble. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Good evening. My name is Hallie Canfield, and I play flute here in the concert band. Born in Vincennes, Indiana on July 18, 1913, comedian Richard Bernard Red Skelton is best known as America's Clown. In addition to his many talents and accomplishments as an entertainer, Red was also a painter and a composer. His musical works included 8,000 songs and 64 symphonies. Among his more notable compositions was his patriotic Red's White and Blue March, which was written in 1964. This invigorating march starts with a very light scoring consisting of piccolos and drums. As each section of the band enters, the piece slowly continues to build until it reaches a climatic ending. The piece portrays the sound of a band as heard from a, specta a spectator during a parade, first very faintly as it approaches in the distance, then getting gradually louder until it reaches the point where the person is standing on the parade route. In one of his most famous soliloquies, Red's Pledge of Allegiance, which was first introduced on the Red Skelton show on CBS television on January 14, 1969, he reenacted a lesson about the American flag as taught to him by his childhood teacher in Vincennes, Mr. Laswell. If you listen closely to the faint music playing in the background, you will recognize the melodies of Red's White and Blue March played at a very slow, solemn tempo. Hello, my name is Abby Kaufman and I play French horn. One of our most beloved and popular American patriotic songs, America the Beautiful, was originally published as a poem in 1875 by Catherine Lee Bates, who was an English professor 
She was inspired by the sights of her country during a summer trip to Pikes Peak. The melody that we are all now familiar with was originally composed by organist Samuel Ward in 1882 as a tune for the old hymn, O Mother Dear Jerusalem. In 1904, the hymn tune was used for Bates' poem. In 1960, noted musician, conductor, and composer Carmen Dragon arranged the piece for concert band. Sam Fox published the band arrangement in 1963, and it has been in print ever since. In the decades since its debut, the Carmen Dragon setting has become the standard instrumental setting of America the Beautiful, and it is played at most patriotic concerts. The dragon version is probably only challenged by Ray Charles' vocal rendition for the title of Most Well Known. Fun fact, Carmen's son is none other than Daryl Dragon, the captain of the recording artist and performing group, Captain and Tennille who are most noted for their music in the 1970s. Good evening. My name is Jordan Bisher, and I play tuba. 
According to Professor Peter Shickley, noted PDQ Bach authority and alter ego, little is known of PDQ Bach. Born 1807 to 1742? Due to a conspiracy of silence perpetrated by his own parents. The last and least of the great J.S. Bach's 20 odd children, he certainly was the oddest. His father completely ignored him, setting an example for his family and posterity. He finally attained total obscurity at the time of his death. His musical output would be lost, but for the efforts of Prof Professor Peter Shickley, who in 1954, rummaging around in a Bavarian castle in search of musical gems, happened upon the original manuscript of the Sanka Cantata, being employed as a strainer in the castle caretaker's percolator. A curiosity examination of the music immediately revealed the reason for the atrocious taste of the coffee. Other works attributed to PDQ Bach are The Abduction of Figaro, Opetus Text, Warched Arf, The Seasonings, The Short Tempered Clavier, Art of the Ground Round, and The Magic Bassoon. The Grand Serenade for an Awful Lot of Winds and Percussion was composed and on commission from Prince Fred of Wine am Rhine for some sort of outdoor occasion. PDQ Bach had originally wanted to write some really long work of 30 or 40 minutes in duration, but he agreed to only write it as third as a long when Prince Fred offered to triple the fee. Soon after it was played, a member of Prince Fred's, uh, Prince's household used the pages to wrap the score in six large sausages, which were sent to Paris to be presented as a gift to Benjamin Franklin, from whom the prince was anxious to obtain specifications for building a glass harmonica, which Franklin had recently perfected. Eventually, the manuscript made its way to an attic in Boston, where the editor found it among the belongings of an 18th century Tory in a box marked seditious material. <laughs> PDQ Bach made several sketches of this work. The different sketches show that he was considering various kinds of groups instrumentationally speaking, but the combination of the instruments he ended up using conforms amazingly closely to the, the, of the modern concert band. Some slight adjustments had nevertheless to be made in preparation for performing this edition. Since certain instruments uh, in the original score, such as the Dill Piccolo, have been made obsolete and we do not have any information on there about their construction. Other instruments, such as the duck call and police whistle, although now rarely seen on the concert stage, are still readily available and have been retained.
Tonight, 
and for supporting our students and our university. Even though the school year is rapidly coming to a close, the Performing Arts Department still has a few upcoming concerts and recitals the next week and a half. On Sunday, April 25th, we have our undergraduate recital, which will be live streamed beginning at 4 p.m. That'll be featuring two of our soon-to-be graduates, Maya Moore, vocal, and Jabari Hunter, piano. We have Jazz on the Wabash on Tuesday, April 27th, which will feature our VU choirs and VU Jazz Ensemble. And on Thursday, April 28th, we have Guitar Fest, which will feature the VU Blues Ensemble. Uh, both of those two events will be live streamed beginning at 7.30 p.m. on the day of the concert. And finally, on May 3rd, we have a faculty recital featuring Professor Addison Grimm on trumpet, which will be live streamed beginning at 7 p.m. We hope that you'll be able to attend these performances virtually with us. They will be live streamed again on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com backslash VU Music. At this time, we'd like to recognize our VU seniors who are gonna be graduating and leaving us. Please stand as I call your name. Joel Edwards and Katie Pruitt, both of our trombones. Also, a big thank you goes to all the concert band members. Not just for their dedication for this concert and the behind the scenes for just this particular concert, but for what they've done all year for the various performances and for their patience with this very unusual time we've been going through this whole year, um, playing and performing with all of our specialized PPE, our masks, our bell covers, our instrument bags, as well as having to be spread out socially distanced. None of this is easy to do as a musician, but thank you all. Um, we just did this so we can do our craft of sharing music and playing this as an ensemble. So thank you, concert band. Good evening. My name is Christy, and I play alto saxophone here in concert band. With each measure alternating between 4-4 four, four and 6-8 time signature, Andrew Boyston Jr. has woven infectious rhythms and melodies that permeate through, throughout the multi-layered composition Snowflakes Dancing. In the composer's own words, Snowflakes Dancing was commissioned by Dr. Scott Jones, Dr. Peter Haberman, and the Concordia College Bands for the 2013 Honor Band. My intent in writing the piece was to create a minimalist work for high school band. The basic process at work throughout Snowflake Dancing revolves around the idea of layering. Every musical idea that enters is in a four bar pattern that repeats four times so, so that every four measures, one musical element leaves the texture and a fresh element simultaneously enters. This creates a constantly shifting texture that gradually morphs over time. Additionally, most of the melodic elements return several times, each time becoming either more or less complex. When I completed the piece, I still had no idea what to call it. Since I finished the work during the winter, it occurred to me that the shifting textures of the work created musical images that were always, always related but never identical, just like snowflakes. It also occurred to me that the premiere would be in northern Minnesota in early April. I joked with my wife that although it was spring, it would be ironic if it snowed that weekend of the premiere, which it did. And also funny enough, it is late April and it snowed during our rehearsal last night. And I blame Susie for that one. <laughs> Thank you for joining this evening. Here is Snowflakes Dancing. <laughs> 